If we look at the human mother's milk, then we can see that the caloric percentage of the protein in that milk is at about 7%. And that is for the human baby, the infant, who is growing in the fastest rate, more fast than any bodybuilder is usually putting on weight. So, who came up with this absurd idea that we would need huge amounts of protein percentage from our daily food to build muscle, to thrive, to be fit in sports, etc. Furthermore, these proteins that usually come from meat, dairy or legumes have many side effects. One of them being the acid residue which the body has to deal, so it's a huge burden for the kidneys and the whole lymphatic system which has to deal with the side products, the toxins etc that these contain. But I also don't want to go too far into that. There are good videos and articles on the web, especially also by Dr. Robert Morse, Dr. Doug Graham, Lauren Lockman and many others who have studied and explained it. Let me um, summarize that. So it is said in that book of Doug Graham, 801010. But we should not think that it is strictly 801010. Rather, 10 is a maximum for the proteins. That is, to make it simple, 811 ratio. But it can easily range somewhere between 7 or 8 and you are well in the good range, especially if you're taking your amino acids, not proteins, from the right sources, which are easily available, clean, not cooked, means not degenerated, easily digestible, easily absorbable and usable for the human body. Then, of course, you need less than if you take a lesser quality of protein which takes also energy to transform into amino acids which then you have to use to build your own proteins. Let us come to the fatty acids. Fatty acids are also not a source mainly for calories but mainly they are a working substance for the smoothness of the functioning of the human body machine. They are important for building hormones, for example, for protecting the nerves, etc. Here again, we have to be very careful where we take our fatty acids from and which are the ratios of the saturated fatty acids, monounsaturated fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids, especially the omega-6 and the omega-3. If we look again at the human milk, there is a certain ratio and we can see that we can get a similar ratio as in the human milk, human body fat, if we combine olive oil and coconut oil. Then of course omega-3. We don't require a lot of omega-3, that's another misunderstanding. The problem is just to keep the omega-6 intake low enough so that we don't come into an imbalance with the omega-3. That means we should be very moderate with nuts and seeds and take mainly our fats from the fatty fruits like olives and young tender coconut because the older coconut also contains more saturated and monounsaturated fats which are more difficult to digest and have a different ratio of course in the fatty acid profile. Hazelnuts, macadamia nuts are among the most suitable nuts for human consumption and I suggest to take about two-thirds of the fat intake from olive or coconut fat and about one-third of the fat from avocado and other nuts or seeds, changing them every day. One seed like sunflower seed you can add on Sunday, like macadamia you can use it on Monday, hazelnut 
you can have some on Tuesday and maybe some pumpkin seed you can have on Wednesday like this I have a plan for each day so I can get the most variety of nutrition but always just take a little quantity and here again we have to look at the ratio we should look that we don't go over the 10 maximum 12 percent of our calories from the fatty acids because the body doesn't need much fat and it will disturb the digestion it will disturb the metabolic function the elimination of the lymph system etc if we consume too much fat then we have to consider the main group that is the group of high caloric sweet fruits which give us our energy the best available energy for human body the fructose in its natural state in the fruit not as an extract with all the micronutrients vitamins enzymes etc etc when we have discussed these three groups we will discuss food combining and meal planning so our main amount of calories should come from the sweet fruits there are a few who are outstanding like bananas mangoes jackfruit and other very sweet fruits of the season be it pears be it peaches whatever is available in your region and there are also less caloric sweet fruits like melons papaya etc they form another group so basically there is the very sweet fruit and there is the subacid fruit like apples and there is the more acidic fruit like oranges kiwi plums cherries and berries and the like also fall into that category digestion is impaired if we mix certain types of foods which leads to fermentation which leads to alcohol which leads to side effects a burden on the liver and the kidneys etc so we should avoid it after many years of experimentation with so many informations etc i have come to realize which is the most clean and less taxing way to eat the raw vegan fruitarian diet and i want to give you one example the way i do it and i can highly recommend you to try that as well in order to have the most efficient conversion of the food into energy with the least waste products and loss of energy so you will feel at ease the body can recover and you can perform at your level best because many people they can get away with a less optimal diet and they think they are doing great but they don't know how well they could perform if they were doing the optimal diet for their body and one example is Mac Danzig professional fighter who switched from a vegan diet to the raw fruitarian vegan diet and he said his recovery times decreased his performance his clarity increased when he went that last step and there are many other examples but I cannot fully remember all their names but you can look it up on YouTube or on the internet so let us come to the point I suggest to start the day with a very light and rather small meal or fresh juice and also here I recommend shifting day by day to get a variety of different micronutrients vitamins etc for example let's take the Sunday squeeze yourself by hand some fresh oranges maybe a cup or two maybe half a liter if you require more energy but not necessarily more not to tax the body early in the morning I would suggest maybe 7 o'clock if you get up 4.30 and you have some regimen some meditation prayer maybe some morning walk etc then at 7 o'clock you can give your body some refreshment with a fresh orange juice or alternatively let's say on Monday you would have a honey melon 
the equal quantity something between 200 gram and 500 gram something very light juicy and refreshing so you can go through the different days and have a different very high water content fruit um, for example also plums I would count into that category other types of melons or grapefruit etc I don't recommend using any machines for juicing because that will denaturalize the fruit and if you can juice something by hand do it otherwise just eat it as it is and you will get the maximum out of the food chew it well chew it calm be at peace while you eat then when you have digested that fully about two hours later I recommend around nine o'clock to have another light meal which contains your overt fat before we speak about that we should take into consideration that if you eat your sweet fruits the ones in the morning and the one of the main meal in the early afternoon which we'll discuss next then from those sweet fruits you will get around four to five percent of your calories from fats you will be surprised if you put your main caloric foods the sweet fruits into an app I recommend chronometer app then you will find about 5% of your calories from the sweet fruits are from fatty acids and they are in the most absorbable easily usable best quality so that leaves us with another 5% of fat maybe 5 or 7% of our total caloric intake to be consumed from overt fat like coconut and olive and a few seeds or nuts if a person had a caloric need of 3000 calories on a normal diet it can be easily reduced to 2500 on the fruitarian diet because the human body needs much less energy to digest the fruits and the correct and right fatty acids than on the average diet so you need less overall calories especially if you add this regimen of separating the food groups as I'm describing it here it will again lessen the effort of digestion and the efficiency will increase it means you can decrease your overall caloric intake so let's say 2500 calories is your complete need for calories in the day 5% of that you already get from your sweet fruits 5% you may want to take or 7% let's say you want to take from your overt fats for the simplicity let us take 5% so 10% of 2500 calories would be 250 calories and half of that would be 125 calories 